Welcome back to another episode of Garage Science. This is going to be a follow-up video to the last one I did where I showed you how to remove the infrared and ultraviolet light blocking filter on the front of the halogen lamp inside your DLP projector. I will be replacing that filter that uh, was removed with a UV pass filter. Uh, so essentially all the light that we really care about will be passed through and everything else will be reflected back. The reason for this is since removing the infrared and UV blocking filter, all the light from the halogen lamp is now directed into the optics assembly and that will heat up your components quite a bit more and uh, you do need extra cooling for that, but adding a UV pass filter to the front of the halogen lamp will limit the amount of light that actually goes into the optics and that should increase the lifetime of your electronics inside your projector. The filter we'll be using is a Roscoe dichrotic filter. It's double coated and allows about 85% transmission from 385 to about 410 nanometers in uh, wavelength. And so pretty much all visible light is reflected on it, which is why it looks pretty much like a mirror. Uh, however, ultraviolet light is able to pass through the filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our infrared and UV blocking filter that was originally in the projector, and we're gonna use it as a template to cut out our new UV pass filter. And once our filter is marked up, I'm using a cutoff wheel on the Dremel to try and cut it out. However, if you have a glass cutter, that's really the most ideal way to do this since it is glass. And as you'll see here, it, uh, it's going to split in half and that's because uh, it's really not meant to uh, be cut this way. Uh, fortunately though, because it was already scored along the line that I was trying to grind down, uh, it cracked and broke along that line and so no harm no foul the portion of the filter that I really care about is still intact and then we'll cut the second direction to get the filter down to its final size again it will end up breaking uh, because I was using a grinding wheel instead of an actual glass cutter you do want to be careful because the filter uh, basically just has a coating on either side and so you can scratch that coating off and so you just want to treat it with uh, delicacy and be very careful with it. Now that the filter is cut, we can go ahead and install it to the halogen lamp. Uh, if you want an in-depth tutorial on how to get to your halogen lamp, you can go ahead and watch the previous video where I show you step by step how to get to the inside uh, and take out the halogen lamp. And now we'll be installing the filter where the original infrared UV blocking filter was. So we'll be taking that bracket off. Once we set our UV pass filter in place, uh, we'll see that it actually is a little loose in there and that's because it's actually thinner than the original infrared UV blocking filter that uh, was originally installed. And so because of that, we got to secure that a little better inside the halogen lamp. Uh, if you feel like it, you can double it up. Uh, however, because you only get about 85% transmission at the wavelengths that you care about, you're going to go, you're going to double that, so you really only get about 60% transmission at uh, the wavelengths that you need to cure resin. So just keep that in mind. What I'm going to be using is a little bit of high temperature uh, muffler sealant, uh, just because I had it on hand. The halogen lamp gets pretty hot, so if you uh, do something like this, you're going to want to use something that's uh, made for higher temperatures. And I'm just going to dab a little bit into each corner just to keep it in place before putting the bracket on. And that's pretty much it. Now we can put our halogen lamp back inside the projector, install it into the printer, and do a test print. The reason I chose to do this modification is because the amount of light that actually comes out of the halogen lamp is actually uh, quite high and you really only care about a handful of wavelengths that actually are emitted from that lamp. So by not filtering any of the light, you're exposing all of your optics and uh, especially the DMD chip inside your projector to a lot more light than it actually needs to be exposed to. In addition, I also had a lot of background curing in the printer. And so uh, what you'll see here with the print results that I have is I've uh, been able to turn down some of the projector settings. Originally, I had the gamma settings at their highest brightness I had brightness set to about 60% and contrast was all the way up. So the projection was very, very bright. And when I took the infrared and UV blocking filter out, it increased the background radiation pretty significantly. And so I had to turn those settings back down. Now that I have the UV pass filter in there, 
should limit background curing uh, on that alone, but I've also turned down the brightness and turned the gamma setting uh, almost all the way down. And I've also put the projector in eco mode, so it should extend the lamp life uh, quite a bit, and it hasn't impacted the cure times uh, that significantly. Once you turn your projector on, uh, it may seem like it didn't turn on, uh, however, uh, that's because the light coming out of it uh, is mostly ultraviolet, so you're not really going to see it anyways. You, the only light you'll really see is a deep blue color uh, coming out of it. And so when you're calibrating your projector, you may actually have to turn the lights off to actually be able to uh, use a grid pattern to calibrate the focus and zoom. And now that we have our projector installed, we can do a test print. We'll be running the same test print we ran on the last video when I showed you how to remove the infrared and UV blocking filter. And so we'll measure and see what our exposure rates are. So starting at the top left, uh, that's 20 seconds of exposure. And running from the top left corner across, exposure times are going down until you get to the bottom and runs across until it ends at uh, 10 seconds. So looks like there's about 11 seconds is a bare minimum, however, uh, several of the steps in between about 15 and 11 seconds just barely cured, so we're going to go ahead and bump it up to 16 seconds. Since the original cure time before doing any modifications to the projector was about 30 seconds, now we're about down to 16, so we still uh, have effectively cut our exposure times in half, and now we've significantly increased the UV output from the projector. The reason I chose to put the UV pass filter in was to limit the amount of light going into the optics assembly. And uh, one thing to note about this is you are exposing your DMD chip to a lot more ultraviolet light. And the spec sheet for that DMD chip actually specifies that uh, the chip is not rated for more than one milliwatt uh, per square centimeter of light intensity. Uh, in the UV range, so that's uh, wavelengths below 385 uh, nanometers. So the filter we've put in has blocked most of the wavelengths above that amount, so that should also help increase the longevity of the DMD chip. However, you're still operating very, very close to that threshold uh, for what the DMD chip is able to withstand. So uh, take that into account uh, if you're considering doing this. Uh, you may be lowering the lifespan of your DMD chip and if that is a component that ends up having to be replaced, it's uh, around about $200. So do take that into account. Currently, I've put about 40 hours on this projector since removing filters and putting in the UV pass filter and haven't had any issues. Uh, if I do end up with significant issues in the short term, I will post those uh, results and let you know so you can avoid possibly uh, doing any damage to your projector. As of right now though, it appears like this is a very effective mod that uh, yields very good results. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Uh, if you have questions, let me know in the comments or if you uh, have any suggestions or thoughts, uh, just let me know. Uh, if you enjoyed watching, like the video. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe uh, so you get notifications on future content that I post. Thanks for watching.